Good morning, adventurers. My name is Ben, and welcome to a morning show where I sit around, drink some tea, and talk about D&D. Mm. First up for D&D today, we have my Stone Creek coffee mug with the narwhal and the unicorn on it. Um, again, I really like a good wide mug like this one. And inside of it, we have some of the throat coat from traditional medicines. Um, apparently, I'm almost out of this one, as you can see. But... Uh, I was outside with a lot of dust today and my throat feels a little funky, so we're going to hopefully get that taken care of. But getting into what we were actually talking about today, we are talking about finishing a D&D campaign. <laughs> I've talked plenty of times about getting towards the end, I've talked about plenty of times about how to start a game, how to like get things rolling, what you should prep early on to try and keep it going. But what what happens? Where what do you do when you are one of the lucky few that actually makes it to the end of a D&D campaign when you can see the finish line just ahead of you? What what do you do? What happens? How how do you how do you go about dealing with that? So, let's go ahead and let's dive in. I have three major tips here for what to do, what to keep in mind, how you can best most effectively bring home the story that you have spent such a long time crafting. Uh, this is based on my personal experience. It's based on me seeing other people do it. It's based on the, the shows that I have watched, the the uh, podcasts and actual play shows that like I've listened to or consumed in some capacity. So hopefully this is a, a semi-comprehensive list, but it's not obviously not the end-all be-all. Each table is going to be different, and once you have gone this far into a game with them, you should know what it is that you need to actually do in order to make a meaningful, effective ending. But let's go ahead and let's dive into these three with my first one, number one here. You need to know where your loose ends are. This is one that uh, you really should be like projecting forward a little bit, uh, something you should kind of be keeping track of as you go through your game as well. Know where your loose ends are. Know what your loose ends are, and most specifically probably, know who your loose ends are. Um, it's going to be one of those things where you don't want people looking back at it and going, whatever happened with that person? If they go, whatever happened with that thing? It's always a, you guys didn't follow that thread, or you guys uh, ignored it, or I don't know, maybe it'll come up next time. It, it could always be one of those things after the game ends when it is a thing or a place or something like that. When it is a person, the people that inhabit their world at the same time as them are the things that they are going to need the most resolution on. And so they are going to be the ones that really should be what you are focusing on and trying to keep in mind when you are coming up with your end game. Um, that is obviously both heroes and villains to your player's story. Uh, all of their allies should be considered as well as the people that they have been fighting as they have gone through here. Um, especially if it's some enemy that they have forgotten about a long time ago that has fallen to the wayside that they never really dealt with that could come back and really sort of like remind them oh hey we're coming full circle on this or an ally that was long long ago lost but suddenly it, when we come to the final battle they have a weird like call off to the side and they look over and they see riding over the hill on a single horse um, someone that they have not seen in a year maybe more of in-game time people like that that come back around at the end are really beautiful ways to sort of like set a scene off really tie a story together and make it feel like things are coming back around uh and makes it feel like the choices that players made way way before actually kind of matter because if it's an enemy their choice to save them or let them go or whatever it was that they did means that now they have to deal with the consequence of that choice. Their choice in uh, an ally or a hero to not go after that person, let them go, um, or to part ways with them at some point is now coming back to them in a slightly different way. And it could be that they are coming over that hill and like saving the day, or it could be that it's an ally that they left for dead a long time ago who has come back in some mild form of revenge or something like that. If they're not going to be the main bad guy, you don't necessarily want to like harp on them for too terribly long, but it is a good thing to just have stuck in there to help you sort of wrap things up and remember things. Um, an example from the campaign I'm working on wrapping right now, um, my players dealt with one of the characters' fathers very early on in the campaign, and he escaped. He made it out when they were like level six or something like that. Now that they are level 19, 
he has come back around and shown his face again. They had said something to the effect of, hey, what happened to your dad about two weeks before he actually showed up again in game, um, working for the big bad um, of the campaign. So things like that can really make it feel like, a, oh yeah, there is a living world out there that is actively working against me or for me sometimes, and I need to remember to be engaged with it. So highly recommend knowing where your loose ends are. Um, if it's an item or something like that, it, it's a little bit more stagnant, or it could be something that has fallen into the hands of somebody else. There's a little bit more wiggle room with it. But the loose ends of the actual personalities that you have put into the world one way or another, that's always good to have on hand. And players, if you're watching this or listening to this, know where your loose ends are because who knows they might be coming to bite you or to help you or they could be people you could like call on to give you aid or people you need to watch out for make sure you know who you pissed off a while ago because they are going to be the ones that are really going to chew you up and spit you out on accident uh if you're not paying attention um so that is that's my first tip know where your loose ends are tip number two know what your players end goals are our players, if you are obviously not a DM, but a player instead, communicate to your DM what your end goals are. So this one is big because it really helps sort of set the stage for the end. Um, players are always, or really should kind of always be thinking about what the next step for their character is going to be. When you come to the end of a campaign, you're at the end of your steps. You have made it to the final steps that you have uh, come here to accomplish. And so what do you want? your end goal to be what is the what is the end of this character that you see in front of you um, is it that they save the world and then they go back to being a farmer that's great know that know that that is what you want going in is it that they need to get through this so that they can pursue their goal of being a lifelong academic or something like that great that's great that's awesome. Is it to finish this out and then continue adventuring that's also fantastic um, you, any of these are perfectly perfectly viable options just know exactly what the stakes for your players are going to be at the end of the game more so than just like what is on the line for me but what is what i as a character want moving forward knowing what your players want as individuals for their characters helps you sort of gauge the level to which you can really sort of push that line to make that ending very impactful maybe knowing ahead of time that your player want or yeah that one of your players wants to go back to farm life well maybe then the final battle the final conflict the final what have you needs to happen adjacent to the farm or adjacent to the thing that will allow them to go back to farming or maybe somebody that they know very well needs to become involved in this end that will inhibit their ability to farm or something after that. Something something about the farm has to draw them back. And so you go ahead and you rope that in. Make the farm that is at the end of it part of their stakes. It'll help get a lot more buy-in from your players if you know that offhand. And it'll make it so that you are not scrambling for hooks at the end of it. Um, because in addition to players just like wanting to buy in anyway, having something that makes them have to makes it a little bit easier um, and so if you have the ability to work some of those in you're gonna be a lot easier on yourself quite frankly on top of that knowing what your players angles are make sure that you can actually kind of set it up so that they have some kind of a satisfying ending at the end of it because that's really what you're trying to do ultimately is to finish out the story with these people in a way that is satisfying for everybody involved because if it's satisfying for everybody then you're just gonna have a better time they're gonna want to play DD again it, you're gonna have the ability to launch another game with these same people maybe somebody else wants to dm maybe you want to dm if you were a player who had a really good ending all possibilities but having that satisfying ending because of the end goals that your players have for you that's the jumping off point. And so that's number two. Make sure you know what your players' end goals are. And then number three, the biggest one for me really, I think, is make sure you give your players a sunset. Um, and Or rise, really. Sunset or sunrise, depending on what it is. If, if you don't know what I mean by that, 
it it is the thing that will sort of set off the rest of the character's life almost um what is the thing that will let them continue living after this or not um, in such a way that is important and meaningful and the weight of what just happened is not lost on them but it is something that they can continue forward after um, and there's a lot of good examples of that but my favorite example of the sun rise is actually uh, well one of my favorite examples is from Black Panther <laughs> the very end of Black Panther spoilers if you haven't seen Black Panther um, when uh, T'Challa brings Killmonger out to see the sunrise one more time before he dies, before Killmonger dies, not T'Challa. Um, just the, the warrior getting to see the sun come up on another day, um, in this case, it, or not in this case being the Black Panther case, but in the case of a D&D game, somebody who is dying, getting to see the sun come up on a brighter tomorrow after the big bad evil has been vanquished, defeated, what a, whatever it is letting them have like one more moment where like everything is going to be all right knowing that everything is going to be all right and having them have that send off um similar sort of thing with the sunset like if if it's not like going to be that poetic end of uh the battle sun rising over the hill kind of thing give them a sunset instead that uh, these are not literal sunrise sunsets it just it's the best way to put it um if you think about campaign one of critical role spoilers for the end of campaign one of critical role if you don't want to hear them leave for the next like 45 seconds or something with vax getting sent off with the raven queen in the way that he did the the emotional sort of goodbye that he got to have there that is his character sunset he he gets the ability to actually say goodbye to all of his friends it's it's horrible and bitter and it's it is heartbreaking to watch but he actually gets to have that closure with the friends that are around him. It is not something that he is just thrown out of. The Raven Queen doesn't appear and just steal him away. She appears, lets him say goodbye to everybody, lets him do his thing, and then they leave. Um, and so that is a, a phenomenal example of one of those sunsets. Um, it really, it the entirety of the end of Campaign 1 Critical Role is a really good example because of the question that Matt asks at the end of it. Um, and it sort of ties into the one I was just talking about with the knowing the end goals, where w at the end he just asks, what do you do with the rest of your time? Um, and then everybody gets to go around and they get to talk about what they want to do with the rest of their lives, what, like how things go from them moving forward, how, you know, everything sort of will play out for their years and years and years down the road and it gets to inform uh, later on when they revisit that world in one shots and what have you um, and it just it it helps to feed that and that is a really good way to go ahead and give you sort of an epilogue that that's really what i mean by the sunset thing at the end of the day it's just an epilogue for your character something where you can go this is what happens this is, this is what happens to this character that I have gotten to play and I have had to fight to keep alive. I have had to, you know, um, try my best to get through all of the things with it. This is what happens to them. This is how they live out the rest of their life. Happy or miserable or desperately working or what, whatever you want it to be. Whatever it needs to be for you to have that satisfying ending is really what it is it should be because the whole point of the game as everybody knows is to tell a collaborative story and so at the end of the day when the dm is the one sitting there narrating to you the end of the story having the players have the input and the wherewithal to be able to say well this is what happens to me this is where i go this is what i do and this is how i finish my time on this planet um, is a really, really beautiful way to sort of like loop everybody back together one last time, like really sort of bring the circle in before the DM goes, okay, and, you know, lays out a few things and then finishes with something to the effect of, and that is where we are going to end this campaign. Thank you so much for playing. Um, giving them that sunset, that sun, that send off moment. It's so, it's so good. And there's so much 
payoff from it if you do it well after you've put so much time into that game. So that's my number three. Probably the most important one on the list. Don't get me wrong, the other two are super important, but like give your players that send off, that sunset or sunrise or epilogue or whatever you want to call it. Make sure they have the opportunity to like say farewell to their character in the way that they most want to. Make sure they, they have the ability to determine what happens to that character as they head off into the great wide world for the rest of their days because it means a lot it really does um so those are my three number one know where your loose ends are number two know what your players end goals are and number three give your players that epilogue or sunset or sunrise whatever you want to call it so moving forward we are going to take a look at the shows that we have today we have in once again no particular order the Paper Dungeon, Chromatic Dice, Beyond the Realms, Unprepared Casters, Greetings Adventurers, Bards of New York, Hapless Heroes, Ion Adventures, Cast Party, Three Black Halflings, Hello from the Magic Tavern, King Leo D&D, Antiheroes Anonymous, Tabletop Tavern, Top of the Round, and League of Lady Adventurers. Please go check them out. Let them know that I sent you because, again, someday somebody's going to say something to me about it, and it's going to be very funny for me. But until then, I'm going to keep asking you guys to do it. So... Yeah, that's everything I have to talk to you guys about. I thought I might have another sentence in there. I didn't. Um, so, thank you guys so very much for making me part of your morning routine. I really do appreciate it. And thank you so much in particular to my patrons. You guys are the ones that make this show possible. If you're interested in becoming a patron, check out the link in the episode description. Um, but that is everything from me today on this Loopy Monday. So don't forget, everybody. Drink tea, play D&D, &D, and keep on rolling.